Well, well, well first of all, Mr. Bellis, um, the, the, the findings, the whole purpose of this conference, I mean, what, what should be your first impressions? Um, well, I think it's tackling some of the key public health issues that people have to face, not just here, but in a whole range of places at the moment. How do we tackle problems such as binge drinking in young people? How do we tackle alcohol and drug use as well? And how do we tackle some of the consequences of that, such as unfortunately violent behaviour that we see sometimes? There's a consistency, it would appear, in what you're seeing across the board, isn't there? Across much of the UK, certainly, and here, we're, we're seeing problems with binge drinking so young people thinking that what they need to do when they're drinking alcohol is get drunk they've got the wrong sorts of messages about how they should drink and they're really putting their health at risk when they're drinking in those sorts of explosive fashions in terms of your your work and and, and uh, across Europe particularly um, what what does anything in particular stand out from the Isle of Man perspective that, that, that perhaps is a bit different to, uh, to, more, to more general findings well Isle of Man is above average in a couple of things, uh, binge drinking, using drugs, uh, but not alone. I mean, there's some other countries that also are high in many things, and on, on the other hand, we have many countries that are low at everything, so substance use go pretty well together on the country level, and also on an individual level, actually. How do we tackle it from where you're standing? What, what's the best perceived ways of tackling this? Well, I don't like to answer these kind of questions because I think this will be asked by to people that are living here more than to us that comes here but I mean you have a unique position in some way here because you have more or less a community of your own and I think that's a very good starting point at least. You focused a lot more on communities of course I, I mean, you've you focused on the Isle of Man, Malta, I think Cyprus uh, amongst others. Um, this is really where the Isle of Man sort of fits in in, in terms of uh, similarities, isn't it? I mean, do, do you think the Isle of Man can learn from some of the other countries' methods that you've been pro uh, adopting? Well, I mean, typically island communities are characterised with uh, by low substance use by adolescents, and, and the Isle of Man stands out in, in that respect. Uh, one of the things that comes out of the survey is that kids here are very independent compared to kids in, in other uh, islands, and and their parents don't control their behavior as much as, as elsewhere, and, and, uh, and that comes out, I think, in part in, in higher alcohol use. Well, we've seen, that we've seen the, uh, the, the report just a week ago now, which shows how high the island is in this table of, of problems with binge drinking, alcohol, drugs, etc., etc. Is it as bad as it seems? It's, it's always bad when young people are binge drinking and taking drugs when, when they haven't, they can't see that there are other ways of enjoying being young other than using substances. But I think this is much part of a much broader pattern. The important thing is the direction in which countries are travelling to make sure that we're getting a grip on things like binge drinking, on cannabis use and on other sorts of substance use, providing the right sorts of alternatives for, for young people and making sure that schools and parents are backing up those messages about doing other things, not being binge drinking and not using drugs. And just finally, what benefits do you believe a conference such as this can have on a community such as the Isle of Man? The critical thing is that people learn from the lessons of other countries, they identify what does work and what doesn't work, and bringing people together from other countries to a place like this to exchange information is one way that you make the right sorts of decisions and avoid the wrong ones. Chris, ask a supplementary there. I mean, the Isle of Man is a small population. The, the adults should be looking after their children and knowing where they are. It, it seems that there's no parental control, or very little parental control in some aspects of the society of the Isle of Man. Well, I think for all parents, the important thing is to recognise that you're setting an example for a start. The way you drink is, is already being recognised by young children before they start drinking themselves. Paying an interest to what they're doing, paying an interest to what they're spending money on can tell you a lot about what your child's up to. And in the long run, it can help you understand whether they're getting into problems with alcohol and drugs before they get very serious. You all know tonight, though, when this is all over, you'll be sitting in a bar tonight, celebrating, having a few drinks together. I mean, you know, where's, where does binge drink start? Where does it stop? That's, you know, one of those things that just seems to come upon us um, as time goes on, doesn't it? Well, I think one of the problems we forget at the moment is that most of those people drinking tonight will be drinking at home and they'll be drinking very cheap alcohol. And that's really where one of the problems we see at the moment is starting because when you can buy a unit of alcohol for 11 pence, that means a child can get pretty well drunk for, a, for not much more than 55p. Are you gentlemen surprised with the Isle of Man's figures in that, in that recent uh, survey? 
Well, not really. It depends on what you mean, because uh, this is not the first survey. So we knew Isle of Man was pretty high also, also before, together with many other countries. So well, it's topping the binge drinking league. Well, one of the top countries, yes. No, it is topping the binge ling- yeah. drinking league. What do you think to that? Well, I think it's a signal to the politicians and other people here to start thinking more about what to do about it. Yeah, but it's also important to, to keep in mind that the British Islands were very high in the, in the earlier surveys. Mm. Uh, if you look at something like cannabis use, uh, Isle of Man is, is well above the UK now. Uh, it was not uh, four years ago. Then Ireland, the UK and, and uh, Isle of Man were exactly in the same spot. In those four years, there's been significant de- decreases in the other two countries. It hasn't been here, and I think that's one of the things that people have to look into. So, I mean, they're telling you that these figures haven't been done correctly, that some countries haven't actually put in the full data. Do you accept that? that the, that's why the Isle of Man is possibly higher than it should be? I didn't understand that question. Well, some countries haven't put in data into this uh, survey, apparently, full data. So the Isle of Man seems to be oh. further up the list than maybe it possibly should. Well, the, the smaller countries, like the island communities, uh, they, we don't use samples. We take all the students because, you know, we have to have at least 3,000 students. And, and if you have fewer kids than that, you take them all. And, uh, and that should not affect the, the prevalence rates at all. I've come to a conference organised by the Isle of Man government to focus on how we really stop people reoffending and improve the criminal justice system. Uh, I've been asked to make a, a speech there, which I've done today. And what sort of response have you had? Very positive. Uh, I'm arguing, that I think it goes with the grain of people at this conference, and I, what I understand also the Isle of Man government's approach, that we have to focus on reducing reoffending. That has to be a central part of our policy, that we have to try and get partnerships uh, of all the agencies involved to work together with people who have offended to try and get them off this, uh, this vicious circle. I mean, what have you learned about the Isle of Man, I mean, its police force and how it deals with criminals? I've had some descriptions, particularly about the new prison which is being established, and people talk very positively about it. Unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to visit the prison myself, but people are very positive about the way that these issues are being approached. I mean, policing over here still seems like a bit of the old-fashioned way, the bobbies on the beach and that sort of thing. Do you think that there's something to be learned there for the rest of the United Kingdom? Very much so. In Britain generally, we've tried to get back to neighbourhood policing, get back to those kind of ideas, uh, to have groups of police officers working directly with the communities which they serve, and that has reduced crime. Now today, is this just a talking shop, or do, you, do people actually go away and learn something from it? I always think these things uh, are worthwhile. I know cynics can describe them as talking shops, but the fact is, uh, particularly in how you deal with crime, there's different experiences from different countries, and we've had a wide range of people internationally at this conference, and I think it's the benefit of everybody to hear how other people do it. I think one of the most dangerous things in all policy, actually, but particularly in criminal justice, is the idea we really know how to do it. We've got it all sorted. We've got nothing to learn from anybody else. I think that's a very dangerous way of looking at things. Uh, on the subject today is G20. Uh, I don't know if you want to talk about this or not, but the, the other man is potentially maybe on a blacklist. What, have you got any views on that? Uh, I don't know in detail what's happened today at the G20, but I'm strongly in favour of uh, dealing with tax havens of any description. I, I don't know exactly what that means for the Isle of Man as such, but I think we need a world regime which uh, really drives down tax avoidance and makes sure we can deal with some of the uh, risks which have done us so much damage. Did you have a perception of the Isle of Man as a tax haven, for instance, before you came here? Uh, not particularly. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, there are a number of islands around Britain, the Channel Islands, the Isle of Man, uh, which have, I suppose, a bit of an image of that kind. How well founded it is, I don't know. I certainly didn't have a view myself of the Isle of Man as a tax haven in that way. But uh, it's a matter where the experts looking at it know what's happening and uh, how people operate. And so having a common uh, system of financial regulation and so on, I think, is important. Have you got high hopes for the G20 conference today? I am optimistic. Uh, I think it's the right thing to go for. Uh, Those who've criticised Gordon Brown or others for being too ambitious I think are wrong. I think we need ambition to try and solve these problems.